Welcome to St. Andrew's Episcopal Church of Lawton. We're glad that you joined us for morning service, the second Sunday of Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Oh God, let our mouth proclaim your praise. And, and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity. One God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Oh, come let us worship. <clears throat> Alleluia. Come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let, let us shout, shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving. And, and raise to the Lord a shout with psalms. For you are a great God. You, you are, are great above, above all gods. gods. In your hands are the caverns of the earth. And, and the heights of the hills are yours also. The sea is yours, for you made it. And, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. And kneel before the Lord our Maker. For you are our God, and we are the people of your pasture and the sheep of your hand. Oh, that today we would hearken to your voice. On this day the Lord has acted, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever. On this day the Lord has acted, we will rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. On this day the Lord has acted we will rejoice and be glad in it. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. Give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. On this day the Lord has acted, we will rejoice and be glad in it. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted, 
did, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Reading is from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonder, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those who outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb with us is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Song of God's Love. 1 John chapter 4, 6 through 11. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of God was revealed among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through Jesus Christ. In this his love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent his son that sins might be forgiven. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought to love one another. For if we love one another, God abides in us, and God's love will be perfected in us. The second reading is from Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through the faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that although perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Of Song of Spirit, Revelation chapter 22, 12, 17. Behold, I am coming soon, says the Lord, and bringing my reward with me to give everyone according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. I am the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who do God's commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter into the city through the gates. I, Jesus, 
have sent my angel to you with the testimony for all your, the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. I am the bright morning star. Come, say the spirit and the bride. Come, let the hearer reply. Come forward, you who are thirsty. Let those who desire take the water of life as a gift. Our third reading is from the 20th chapter of John. <clears throat> when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the, mark, the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Good morning, uh, this Easter, uh, first Sunday of Easter. May we pray. Speak with us and through us, dear Lord, this first Sunday after Easter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The rites are dimmed. The widow brides are crossed. The main door is locked and bolted, and the security chain is in place. Someone has even drawn a table across the door. Just an extra precaution in case someone tries to force the door. Everyone is speaking in harsh tones. Fear is written all over their faces. The room is too crowded for comfort. Some are even seated on the floor. This happens to be on a Sunday evening in a rented apartment in downtown Jerusalem where we lay our sin. This is a hurriedly constituted crisis command center. The occupants in this room are the members of the shadow cabinet of a revolutionary leader who was posed to take over government just a few days ago. This is according to his followers. Things seemed to be going on so well for him. 
He had become so popular with the masses. His crowd pulling prowess was the envy of many a political leader. Just a few days ago, those in this room had envisioned themselves occupying high government offices. Up until the ruling elite pulled the lag from under their feet. In just a few days, treasonable charges were raised against their leader, which carried a mandatory death sentence or death penalty. In record time, he was found guilty, sentenced to the maximum penalty. Surprisingly, the charges were to a great extent sponsored by the religious elites, a constituency he seemingly represented. To discourage other possible rebel leaders, the ruling elites made the execution public and in full glare of world media. The crisis meeting was hurriedly assembled on Friday evening. This was immediately after the arida was executed. Thanks to the intervention of a well-connected fellow called Joseph from Arimathea, they were able to bury the arida that same evening. They all remained behind closed doors the whole day on Saturday. The execution of the reader definitely puts all those in this room as next in line. They remain prime suspects in the coup cool conspiracy. They expect the police to come calling any minute. In the first meeting on Friday evening, one person had suggested that they free as far as possible from Jerusalem. And fortunately, it was too late in the night to travel. Another idea was floated on how they could escape on the crack of dawn Saturday morning. Yet another participant well versed with the law of a ruled third. He reminded them that it was a high sacrilege to travel on a Sabbath day. This left them with only one option, stay put in Jerusalem amidst all the risks until early Saturday morning when it would be rigor to travel. They have still not moved out this Sunday morning. Why the change of plans? Something happened in the morning. Mary Magdalene sneaked out of the premises early in the morning to give her last respects to the master at the tomb. She lashes back shortly after and calls out Peter and John. After whispering to them, the three of them lash off to the tomb. This was shocking enough, uh, sorry, whatever transpired out there has been the topic of discussion the whole day. The two men confirmed that the master's body was not in the tomb. This was shocking enough news for everybody but nothing compared to the report brought by Mary Retalon. She sensationally claims that of the two, after the two men left, the master appeared to her in person, spoke to her, and even sent her to the list with a message. This brings more confusion in the camp. Nobody can believe 
how the master could not have appeared to the two men who were higher in the camp's pecking order. I mean, why even trust such important classified information to a woman who doesn't even qualify to be called a disciple by virtue of her gender? The news of his absence from the tomb and Mary's claims added more confusion and fear to the whole group. In his lifetime, the master had spoken repeatedly about his death and resurrection, but none of them understood him. Maybe out of embarrassment, none dared to tell him that they couldn't understand what he was saying. They so much believed in his cause that most of them severed relations with their previous employers to follow him. Some even closed down their businesses. Surprisingly, their reader always had solutions when they got stuck. He was known for miraculously making things happen. Nothing was so difficult for him. He, for instance, learned a very successful feeding program without no known donor or source of funding. He was also a daring of the terminally sick and the rain, for he could just say a word and they could get well. His teachings gave a lot of hope and reason to write for the downtrodden masses. In his presence, they had no worry in the world. Not even when their tax returns showed that they owe the, the revenue authority. He had a way out of it, but not this time. They are faced with the challenge of a lifetime, but he's nowhere to give a solution. The fear allowed the room is coupled with something else, embarrassment, anger, guilt, just to mention a few. There is a general unspoken question. What if Mary is light and the master is alive? How can we even face him after abandoning, abandoning him on Friday afternoon during his hour of need? None of us was even led to fight for him or raise a word of defense during the trial. Some of us even publicly denied that we have ever seen him live alone being his followers. The thought of meeting him face to face made all shanda with guilt, fear, and embarrassment. Just as everyone is pondering this possibility, suddenly someone who was not in the room with them appears. Their fear shoots to the highest peak. Some even faint, or the stronger ones are dumbfounded. Wait a minute. This guy looks familiar, looks like our master. The last person we would have right to meet under the prevailing circumstances. They all expected a reprimand beyond their imagination. However, the first words that came from his mouth changes everything. Peace be with you, he says. Those words seem to work wonders on them. He also raises his hands 
and shows his nail-inflicted injuries at the cross. In a fraction of a second, their deepest fear, guilt, embarrassment, uncertainty, confusion, and all are transformed. They are all suddenly filled with joy beyond imagination. He speaks the magical words again. This time, even adding that he is not only mad with them, but is even willing to entrust them with a very high divine assignment. He then gives them a good dose of the Holy Spirit. The helper whom he had always promised them in his other life. Beloved brethren, that is exactly the nature of the post Easter Jesus. He is always conscious of our guilt, our fear, our confusion, our embarrassment, and our failures in life. Instead of sternly primards, he always comes to us loaded with peace to ease our burdens. Before his death, in the same gospel, that is gospel of John, Jesus had promised his disciples this peace, but they didn't understand it then. He had said, and I quote, all this I have spoken while still with you, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. That is according to John chapter 14, 25 to 27. No wonder he had to breathe the Holy Spirit to them for them to get this peace. Beloved brethren, the world's understanding of peace is like lack of conflict, freedom from disturbance, tranquility, to mention just a few. In this post-Easter era, because we are living in a post-Easter era, we are faced by countless frightening circumstances. Some of us are terminally ill. Some have lost their jobs. Businesses are collapsing. The very important social interactions which keep some of us going are shaken. We are living in fear of economic collapse. Even at close personal levels, some of us are facing broken marriages and broken relationships. All of these brethren are frightening events. In a worldly sense, these are indicators of lack of peace. However, the beauty of it is that the post Easter Jesus is always ready and willing to speak peace among us. I miss 
being in a Eucharistic service and hear the minister say, the peace of the Lord be with you. Magical, calming words. Fortunately, the post-Easter Jesus is omnipresent. He is all over. He is with us, even in our homes, in our home fellowships, as we study the scriptures together as families, as we say a prayer together aloud the dinner table. He is with us. Amidst the fear and anxiety, the post-Easter Jesus reminds us that he is not through with us yet. He is actually just beginning with us. After turning the disciples' fear into divine joy, he sends them out to the world. We have a lot of work, brethren, ahead of us. So we would rather embrace Jesus' joy and forge ahead. Remember Elijah in the cave? Remember when he thought all is lost? Actually, he was at the verge of giving up, even calling for death or seeking death, until God who is passed to him and, I, and tells him, Arise and take a meal, for the mission ahead is so great. Brethren, as we meditate on the post Easter Jesus and on the peace he speaks upon us, may we shed all fear and hearken to the risen Christ's invitation. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Those are the words, the invitation of the post-Easter Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. He rose again on the third day and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. name. Your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Help us, O God, our Savior. Deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation. Give to your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations. And your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you. And your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So, so we shall rejoice 
and be glad all the days of our life. Our first call. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is the perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely, trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world. By our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service. And by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. To Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.